I paid a visit to see motion graphics and video production specialist Michael Petit to get his tips and most loved After Effects CC features since the launch of the Creative Cloud. Mike, great to meet you. Thank you so much for having us here. Good to meet you too. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? So I'm a motion graphics artist based here in Media City, um, mm -hmm. working for the BBC mm -hmm. and for other broadcast clients. And what sorts of projects do you mainly work on? Um, I do things for children's programmes, for mm -hmm. current affairs programmes, sport content, yeah. um, creating animated graphics, title sequences, mm -hmm also working with correcting footage, doing green screen work, things like that. Great, you've got actually quite a lot of heavy graphics production areas down here, particularly with BBC, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I mean CBBC, um, Children's, they, they do so much graphics work across mm. their programmes, sport as well, yeah. um, use a lot of graphic content, so yeah, there's, there's plenty of work out there. Yeah, very good. And how important is it, do you think, to be uh, within a media city in this sort of environment? I think having the proximity Mm -hmm. to Media City is great for the kind of work that I do because it allows clients to come in and take a look at the work I'm doing as it's work in progress mm -hmm. or even earlier than that we can have meetings really easily either in mm -hmm. the office here yeah. or I can go over and meet them and see what they're after um, so I think that's that's really great and also when we're in production it means that I can be a bit more responsive and be there in person a lot of people mm -hmm. although we can work online over email and things like that people the do face still to like, face yeah, is it's important still a, it's right? still a great thing to have yeah. So you've been working with the Creative Cloud since launch and Creative Suites prior to that. What are the benefits of being a member of the Creative Cloud to you? I think for a lot of people in the past, the creative packages have been prohibitively expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and now with the subscription model, for most working freelancers or businesses, mm -hmm. you know, the, the subscription fee that's charged, I think, is small money, really. Um, I think also the ability to always be up to date with the latest software is great. Yeah. Um, the more and more people that have that and use it in that manner mean that you've got less fragmentation, you've got people on Easy different collaboration and Exactly, that sort of so thing. if there's another graphics facility down the road and they're mm. on CC and I'm on CC, hopefully mm. we're both on the latest version because we've all clicked update um, and we've got less of that issue when we're trying to share files and things like that, which mm. would have happened all the time in the past when people haven't bought that upgrade box, etc. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of us being able to give you the latest codecs, how important is that sort of thing, the updates, the new features? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fantastic with all these new camera um, formats coming out um, and the need to do things like stabilization with drone footage, things mm. like that, uh, keying things out, all yeah. needing to be done better, quicker, all this new functionality that's being added all the time really helps with that. Great. And which products within the Creative Cloud then, in terms of the desktop apps, do you mainly use? Predominantly with doing video work, I use After Effects and Premiere Pro. Mm -hmm. I do also use, alongside that, Photoshop, Illustrator, Audition, yeah. so uh, quite a broad number of tools. Yeah, and you have them all open and kind of working a lot yeah, of the time Yeah, as much as my right? PC will, uh, <laughs> will manage, I will load as many up as I can. Yeah. Um, but that's the great thing about it, the fact that you can you know, you can have After Effects open and be working on an Illustrator document mm -hmm. and change some text in the Illustrator document and then save that file, open it up in After Effects and it's it's already updated, there's no saving it out and loading back in again, it's all linked, so yeah. having them all open works fine. Great, and you're going to show us some of the features that you most use, what, within After Effects? Yeah, predominantly with After Effects, mm -hmm. but also to just show some of the integration between not only some of the Adobe packages like Adobe Premiere, yeah. but also with some third-party applications like Cinema 4D from Maxon. Yeah, that's great integration between After Effects it's and Cinema 4D, yeah. isn't it? Um, and these are features that have come around since the launch of CC. You're kind of giving us features from the launch up until um, present day, the latest and greatest as well. Exactly, yeah. Great. Can we take a look at what you've sure. got to show us sure. first? Thank you. One of the new features in the latest release of CC, After Effects, is the 
the combination of key light, which is a great keying tool for green screen, blue screen work, things like that, um, with another couple of um, keying tools which allow you to just clean up the edges and refine a, a key which might not look perfect. Um, these are Key Cleaner Advanced Spill Suppressor and they've all mm -hmm. been combined together into a preset um, and it just makes the keys look that a little bit better and give you a little bit more control as well, especially when you've got compressed footage that's been shot and say a DSLR or something like that. Um, it gives a more professional finish to your key. So I've got um, some footage here from a local football team. We've got um, some players that um, we're going to key out and we're going to use that as like a, a lineup video at the start of every mm -hmm. home game on the big screen and around the ground so that the fans around the stadium can uh, can see who's going to be playing for their team that day. Yeah. Um, so this is this is one of the one of the players for the team against a green screen. First thing I need to do on this is because of the the way the the thing was shot, we just need to do a little bit of a mask just to clear up some of these lights that are in, in shot just so that we're focusing on the subject and the green. So, so there's no need to be doing work where we don't need to, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I mean that's dead quick. We can, this is my end frame so I just need to check that this isn't cutting off anywhere. So he's masked out nicely. I'm just going to scrub through, just check I'm not chopping his head off anywhere. Looks fine to me. So now we're just focusing on that area. Mm -hmm. So in our effects and presets, I just need to search for key light, which I say would be the tool I would normally use to do this kind of thing. But now you can see we've got an additional preset, which is key light plus key cleaner plus advanced bill suppressor. It's a catchy title. <laughs> it is, yeah. But it works great. It works great. So I'll just drop that straight onto that clip. Doesn't do anything in to begin with, because first I need to actually sample the colour. So I take the eyedropper as normal from key light. Drop that on to the green, and you'll see, to most people's eyes, it looks like it's kind of done. So if we um, change it to the just the alpha channel, you'll see that there's still some grey appearing in the background, the edges are a little bit distorted, things like that. So there's some adjustments to be done here. The first thing I would always do is go into the screen mat in key, in key light, just adjust the black level on that, mm -hmm. and again, the white slightly. And we've got a pretty, yeah. to be honest, a pretty clean key there. And this is the way that you kind of standard uh, to work in key light, isn't yes. it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a great, really, really powerful tool. Normally, when you load in key light, it will automatically switch to the final result and will do a really good job, usually, of, edge, of sorting out your edges and you've got mm. controls for softness, shrink, things like that. But with combination with the key cleaner and the advanced spill suppressor, you've got even more control. So with these new effects, if I put it back over to RGB, we come in and focus on the edges here a little bit. Let's see if we can.